Uh, is on V and uh, we are assuming that V is finite and that uh, from each E we can go to each Y to remember the three more for each XY in V where this means that there is a path uh, where it steps as a simply positive probability you, you remember the framework or you want me to recall the notation quickly? <coughs> so we have this set B, okay, well the final set. We are thinking it's just a graph, that actor with some arrows. On each arrow there is a weight, so the weight of the arrow that goes from X to Y is P of X Y. Okay? And when you write a piece is connected to Y, that is in a direct way so with an arrow, this means that uh, uh, you fix two points, X and uh, Y, and there is a finite number of steps where the graph is finite, not necessarily finite, uh, <coughs> with uh, such that the one can go following the step from X to Y, and uh, through these steps each arrow has a weight which is strictly positive. So, like this is X, this is uh, X1, and then there is Y, so this means that P X is 1 is strictly positive, and P X1 Y is strictly positive, then this will imply that I can go from x to y. It's just that this part is probably this problem. And uh, so under this hypothesis, finite v and this hypothesis, we have actually checked that, that there exists a probability measure on v, which is invariant, exists in this unit. It's invariant, which means a lot of things you remember we introduced. So this is just your case. Very quick, very quick uh, <coughs> notation record. So if you remember, we have introduced the, this operator I call it L of functions that was just the sum of the y of p x y f of y minus f of x. And then invariant means that when you calculate p on the left, this was zero for the fdf, but this is just a notation to the <coughs> integral with respect to pi, so it just means the sum over all the x and v of pi of x, l f of x. Do you remember, do you remember this notation? Yeah, and then we have, so we should write that V is sort of a very large set. We take two non empty sets, A and B, are subset of V, disjoint. And uh, um, we wanted to estimate for what reason, like the typical time to go from A to B. And uh, what, what we actually wanted to do is uh, to get an explicit formula for the moment. So what we did was to. Um, fix a very precise touching measure on A, so we start with a random measure on A that we choose, okay, this is a bit cheating in some sense, we choose a measure on A which is kind of comfortable for our calculation. And then we want to estimate when we start with this random measure on A, the hidden time of B. So the hidden time of B, remember, was a function on the path, path of infinite length. This was the first n such that E is a time n in B. And we wanted to estimate the special time when we start with shape. So, and then we have the final knee, uh, we start, we call it last time, which is a probability measure on B, again, but actually the check that uh, is concentrated on the set A. Okay. Uh, and it was the final score, so knee start of the point X was 1 over the capacity of A and B of um, um, P of S minus L A L star A star of X where so first remember that given by and the T we have defined that 
new transition probability T star by asking this relation. Okay. Do you remember I have phi, I have P, I can define since the P of X is positive for each X strictly, I can just define P star to this formula. P star is a new transition probability in the X away, which corresponds to random walk we start with probability measure pi and go backward in time instead of forward. And in case we define just P star in this way. And then from P star we can build in the same way as we build all the all the uh, uh, all these objects like L, pi, and probability measures, all the same objects, just with the star, which means that we do it with the starting probability, transition probability P star. So then H star of X was just the probability star when we start in X of E and A before it can be. And of course L star is just that, right? L star L is just the sum of y of p star x y f of y minus f of x. And what else? And finally, okay, the capacity between a and b was just the normalizing factor of this thing, so, so that it's probability. So this was, if you remember, uh, the Dirichlet form of h h, or equivalently, the Dirichlet form of h star h star. And this was just um, the sum of all the x of p of x, p of x y symmetric, uh -huh. h of y minus h of x squared, and that's the same thing that is the sum of all the x of p of x, p of x y, h of y minus h of x. <coughs> So we introduce this key quantity, the capacity. Uh, these it's called sometimes harmonic measure, equilibrium measure on A. And what we have proved is that in a explicit formula that was uh, the expected star factor when so for each function F, the expected time when we start with this new star, so the in time of B was 1 over the capacity between A and B times uh, the, the sum over X of P of uh, sorry, here we wrote the integral between 0 and L B of F we are actually the sum the sum and from let's for I 0 to minus 1 of F no, L B minus 1 of one the large the sum over all the x of p of x, f of x, h star. That's what we got with the explicit representation of this of this object. This is a function on the path, this, this is a function which drives on all the path up to up to an arbitrary large time, we take this expectation and we write it just in this way. Okay, that's where we stopped more or less last time. And then, uh, okay, and we have also checked, we have checked the, the fact that if P is equal to P star, that's called the reversible case, uh, the capacity between A and B was the infimum over all the F such that F restricted on A is 1 and F restricted to B is 0 of the Dirichlet form of F. The Dirichlet form of F is the sum of the Dirichlet form of P of F minus LF of F. So it's, it's a scalar product of G of F. Since this is symmetric, <coughs> the reversible case this is just a scalar product on some function. Okay. So what we want to do is to write uh, uh, 
thing is to write a variation of formula for the test. Because this will help us next time to make uh, some explicit testing. Okay, so uh, yeah. So we start now on this uh, so variation is for the a quick reminder for you and variation of formulas for the capacity. In not necessarily reversible cases, so this is a nice problem. Non reversible cases. So non reversible just means that uh, this in, uh, the inequality is not necessarily true. Okay, P star can be different from P. So this is called reversible because it's like if you go forward in time and backward in time, you see the same law. Okay, because P is supposed to be star. <coughs> Of course, that means that what you see forward in time is the same as what you see backward in time, just that the probability that you see something forward in time is the same as you see backward in time. And, um, okay, so, um, good. so we have this VE, and just let's leave some kind of definitions. Uh, if F, I have a function from B to E, is sorry to R or C, and they have a function I from E to R. Okay, then we define the F as a function from E to R. Um, actually, uh, just let's take let's take the set of edges as V times D. You can move it with for this. Simply df of this y will be f of y minus y. And then there is a, an operator on the i which I should call d, d star. Probably, but in the literature, this is here yeah, just called the divergence. It's not completely correct uh, word, but that's what it's called. Well, the divergence of i from, is from b to r. So the divergence of y. At point x is just the sum of the y of i over c. So it's okay if I get if I if I have a function from vertex is to r, I can say it is a sort of gradient, okay? This will be differential, but okay. F of y minus f of x and this, which is not exactly divergence, but is usually for the persons in this context, does the opposite. It takes functions on Cows x y and gives me a fun number. And then, of course, you can just uh, uh, make a Stokes theorem of integration by parts, as you can easily check if I the mark. The sum of the y, the, the sum of the x and y of the f of uh, x y i of x y is equal to minus the sum of all the x and y of f of, of x the divergence of i of x. It's just that uh, I mean the, the proof is in it. Let's prove it. Uh, I can wrap the B is equal to B minus B, right? I do it just because I made a mistake in the definition of the word, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is I of X and Y minus I of Y and X. Sorry, what should I do next? Sorry. <laughs> um, sorry, the Y is called the divergence even if it's valid in the code of because because you see, what's the divergence? I is like a, a flow. Okay, you give me you give you give me a bird, you give me an edge, and they tell you kind of how much is flowing through the edge. I call it I of that uh, of that uh, arrow. And then this is just how much goes out minus how much goes in. That's uh, called the divergence, right? So, so uh, that's why I was 
for the slide. And then uh, uh, I said, uh, this man is this. This is uh, this is just this, right? By the definition of here. But of course, here yeah, some over of the x and y, so I, just, I can just exchange uh, y and x, and I get exactly this. Uh, So I do it uh, here, see? So I get the sum of the roll of the x, the sum of the roll of the y, of f of x, i of y, x, minus x. And OK, the sum is here, and that's exactly the minus the x. That's just uh, the integration by parts. And uh, OK. And uh, let's give another definition. Uh, so let's make, so we fix A and B, B as before, OK? And uh, um, let's call H alpha beta, the set of function F from B to R, such as F restricted to A. So f of x is equal to a constant alpha for all x in A, and f of x is equal to the constant beta for all x in B. These are just functions that are constant on A and constant on B. On A they are the constant alpha, and on B, the set B they are the constant beta. And then let's call f gamma So this will be the set of functions i uh, from e to r. If I say a function i from e to r, I identify it with the function i from b times b to r simply by, by putting i equals zero over all the over all the double xy that are not edges of the graph. So this will be the final for all the e, all the final i from e to r, such that so the divergence of i at the point x is zero in all x that are not in a or b. Okay. And the sum over all the x in a of the divergence of i at the point x is equal to minus gamma. Okay, this condition actually implies that the sum of a root x in b of the divergence i of x is equal to plus gamma. So who is the space at the oh, okay, the space h is quite obvious what is this? What is the space gamma? This is the set B, this is the set A, and there are all arrows and vertices. Okay. And uh, what is the set of functions in the Okay. So, I, in a gamma, it means that I put a weight on each arrow, okay, a number on each arrow, by x and y such that, okay, there will be also something, yeah, some other center. <laughs> the total of amount, so I, I think that it's a flow, okay, the function of the arrows. If I sum over all the arrows that exit from A minus the weight on all the arrows that enter into A, I get minus gamma, okay? So kind of, a total flow gamma is going out from A. Then inside here, there is a sort of uh, curve of load, so in each point the divergence is zero in the middle. So whatever enters exit, okay, the sum of all the flow that enters goes to exit, the divergence is zero. And then uh, since and then of course by conservation it, it will happen that the sum of all the x and b must be gamma. Right? Because if from here gamma enters, it means that here uh, it flows out, here gamma enters in. Uh, you can, I mean, from this, uh, from this uh, equality in the remark, 
you can immediately check that the sum, uh, notice that the sum of all the x of the divergence of y of x, whoever is I, uh, this must be zero, because I just, uh, you know, I just applied, but there was no x y, right? I yeah, just apply this formula here and uh, with f equal to 1, so the f is 0. So if f is equal to 1, this must be 0. So if <laughs> the sum over all the a union b plus the sum over a plus the sum over b is 0, so if it's minus gamma on a, it's, 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 it's gamma on b, right? <coughs> Sorry, for no boundary here. And then. Uh, so let's make a position. <coughs> let's as before a to x be the probability that so a is more than a. Uh, let f the function in h alpha zero, so zero on b and alpha on, on a, and at i b in f gamma. Then
sum of rho the x actually and y of L H of X here, x, x. And now this is zero on B. This is zero on A uh, union B of the matrix, so this would be in the reversible case. This would just be the sum of rho A and A, but F over A is constant, L H is uh, L H. And uh, I was minus the temporal dot, so this gives you the alpha and the test. Okay. In the reversible case, this is a limited set. Um, let's check what to do here. Check, check. Um, <coughs> Of course, it's this part is this part, and this part is this part. Okay. So let's do first uh, sum over rho x and y of dh on x and y, i for x and y. This is uh, quite simple. Okay. Uh, this is sum over rho dx. So of h of x um, so we just use uh, what we were before it is minus the divergence of y and the y test <coughs> so now overload the x in b okay. but now trivially uh, h is 0 on b so the sum is just, uh, I can remove from the sum of the x in B. The guy by the definition of F gamma is 0 on A union B complementary, right? So the, all this term at 0 is there not in A. Either because this is 0, this is 0. So this is the sum of all the x in A of H of x, the divergence of I in X. But remember that H is equal to 1 on A, so we get just the sum of the rest, and so this is a trivial set. And that was just by definition minus, this was the sum was minus gamma, there's a minus here, so we get plus gamma. Okay? While the sum of rho dh of x and y of c and x y. Um, so what should we do here? Uh, so we do h of x. And okay, 
now I do this again. Again, you have to change just the role of x and y. It's nothing. So here, I write this as uh, so first, this was h of y and now this one. So here again, I sum over all the x and y, so I can just uh, call uh, y x and x y in the second sum, right? And uh, I just then uh, make this, this uh, subtraction, I guess, and I get h of y minus h of x, h of x. Um, so you see here I get p x y. Minus C star Yx no, uh, minus P of Y C star of X of Y and X. Do you agree? I just so I just took this minus this was just the definition there, right? There's something which is not consistent. Uh, now when I call in the second line y x and not y, this term just changes sign. Oh, that's why. This time just this guy just changes sign because it's h of x minus h of y. P of y, the star of y, x, f of x. So I just uh, did a subtraction, it became a plus. So, okay, but this is what is it. Do, do you agree with this? Okay, now. Uh, um, So the first term is, is quite simple because when I sum over y, this is exactly LH of x. Okay. So this is equal to the sum over all the x. Sorry, I had a, it's very, 
of x y square over p of x p s of x y
And uh, okay, now if it's not symmetric, how do I write that the square just is in the symmetric part of this Okay, I, I said it just quickly because we checked the, the fact that this is this already the right time. And now, for a, if I take specifically a function here, but this will have the capacity. So this is equal to b cf minus i cf minus i to the half twice capacity b to the half. Okay, what we got is that twice, I mean, you, you read the inequality, right? Twice the capacity. Less or equal than twice d blah blah the capacity to the half the capacity to the half and this implies this is okay. so this I mean the answer is, is, is almost trivial you just sums and check things but uh, what's the sharp point here here remember if so what, why do we do these things? Remember always the reversible case. In the reversible case, you remember Cf was minus Lx. No, uh, not really it's Cf was P of x. So the symmetric case P is equal to P star is equal to Ps. So this was this. In this case, I can just take in this formula, if I take i is equal to zero, okay, so of course this is in the space f naught, f naught where all these functions could ever be equal to zero, and the total flow minus gamma, if here there was gamma, was flowing out from a, so if it's zero, I can put just i in f equal to zero, and then you can check that d of cf, cf, or just the Dirichlet formula in this case, in this case. Because this goes away with this, and you get up to get So, in the reversible, so what would be natural to, to speak? Okay, you can one thing that there is a classical reversible case, is again, the capacity is smaller than the Dirichlet formula. The point is that if I now do this in the non-reversible case, if I do not add this uh, zero flow current, this current, uh, I, I will never get an inequality when I optimize. So the role of this i, I don't say in the in the non reversible case, this inequality will be we will check it, an inequality for specific f and i, but uh, the optimal i will never be zero. If I just try to trivially extend this uh, inequality to the reversible to the non reversible case. With some care, I can still get an inequality, but this inequality will be strict, will be never, uh, there will be no f and i for which it becomes an inequality. Okay? It's not, uh, okay. And similarly, we can make the other side of Now the lemma. So here it was f in h1 not, i in f not. And here we have that for each f is h 0, 0, not not and i in f1, the capacity between a and b is bigger or equal than 1 over b of cf minus i, cf minus i. Okay, and the proof is more or less Similar. Remember, so we have this whole formula I just said, but the sum of the uh, times uh, CF minus I minus CF plus I. Remember, this was alpha capacity plus gamma. If f was in h alpha zero and gamma and i was in f gamma, I just this was the first remark we made today. Uh, so the h, the h. This formula is true even only if uh, the function here is h, because we use that h was the dysfunction here. We use that it was 
zero on B and one on A, and it was harmonic on uh, on the level mass. And if you remember, only H is a function for expanding these two properties. So we have this. So now, uh, if we write it here, in this case, if we write it in this case, we get that one gamma is equal to the sum of all the x and y of the age of x and y times uh, i minus cf of x and y. Um, okay, but we do exactly the same thing as before. We do just Cauchy Schwarz inequality, exactly as we did here. So we get less or equal. Just now f is in H not not and I is in F1. So we get less or equal than uh, uh, the factor two, which is a bit D of C I uh, I minus C F I minus C F to the half uh, E of H H to the half as before and now this is the case. So D is bigger than one over D. Plus, 
PS of XY is your Y minus XY. And here, the optimal are F bar equal to H minus H star divided by the capacity and I bar equal to C bar uh, plus um, Q of X Q of X Y Yes. H of Y minus the uh, X divided by the X. So here the infimum are thin because we have a finite graph and uh, so before we prove that this is always smaller than this and it's always bigger than this and now we are claiming that these uh, equalities are actually sharp uh, for specific uh, f and i ok, so proof is not sharp um, so we know already capacity uh, Smaller or equal than the infimum, blah blah blah, and capacity is bigger or equal than one over the infimum of blah blah blah. Because we have proved this equality for each f and i in that space, we have proved this inequality for each f and i in that space, in those spaces, so of course it's optimizing that this. And then we should just check. Uh, Say in this case, for example, in the, sorry, in the first uh, in the first example, that uh, the equality is actually a thing. Well, uh, one part is trivial. So, if I, so of course, this F bar is certainly in H one not because both H and H star are so the average is also defined by one and A and zero and B because they both have this property. Uh, if I put so if I put this optimal choice here, well, you see, uh, C F just goes away with. C. I mean, with this F bar and this I bar, this C F bar just goes away here, and I get exactly, if you remember the definition of B, the capacity. Okay, so, okay let's try it. Um, uh, let's prove the, let's prove the first. Let's prove capacity of A and B is equal to B of C F bar minus F bar the first and uh, the first okay the fact that it's equal is immediate as well there's only one thing we should check because uh, this two, uh, let's write it the capacity so let's write it sorry d of c f bar minus by the bar c of f bar minus by the bar I take this definition of F bar and I bar, and I recall the definition of D. D. I just get the sum of 1 of P of X, P S of X and Y. And then if I put uh, the things, I just get P of S, P S of X and Y, H of Y minus H of X, all squared. So this is. Uh, and this is one half in the definition of it. So this is one half, and I mean three of it. Which was one of the many stretches. Right. So the only real thing we should check 
is that I buy the retinas not. The fact that if I plug this F here and this F back here and get the capacity, it's immediately. Okay? I knew the inequality for all the F in H1 0 and the I bar in F0. This F bar is obviously in H1 0 and you could check that this I bar is in F0. That's the only uh, non trivial uh, statement here. So uh, let's try this. So F bar. So let's check. I bar is in F0. So we have to check two things. We have to check that the divergence of I of x is equal to zero if p six is not in A or B. And we have to check that the sum of all the x in A of uh, the divergence of I of x is this. The divergence of so the divergence of i in the point in A will not be there, just the sum. So um, and I bar is this guy. Okay, just let's just try it. Um, that will be so the divergence of i in the point A, no matter where this point is. This is the sum of all the y of so we have this guy. Hopefully, so that's the sum of all the y of c phi of x over x y f of f bar of x minus p of x p star of x and y f of y. Minus, so, sorry, this plus this part as well, plus the sum of rho dx of rho dy of p of x, p s of x of y, h of y minus h of x. And let this serve minus the same stuff, but when we change x with y. So if x is not in A union B, this is exactly zero. Okay? 
on A, this is not zero, but the sum, recall that the sum for all the x in A of uh, P of x, yes, L inch of x is equal to uh, minus the capacity. Well, minus the capacity is also equal to the capacity star so this is also equal to the sum of all the x and a of p of x l star h star of x so on a this is not zero but exactly the sum of all the x and a is zero which is the second property that means. Okay. so the only I mean in this statement of the theorem that I just Erased one second ago. It uh, was on this blackboard in the middle. Uh, we checked that this L bar, I bar are optimal because obviously when we calculate D on the table we get the capacity, but more importantly, F bar, which was, uh, was F bar, which was this H plus H star divided by 2, was in the good space, and I bar, which is CF bar plus this bit plus plus this guy is, is a zero flow. So it's something that uh, what we just said is that I here there was the set A, here there was the set B, there are some arrow that get in and get out, and then they are connected. This I it may it, it, in the middle it just transfer the mass, so the divergence in the middle is just zero. But here it gives some positive or negative weight to each arrow that is the way that the total sum is zero. Okay. This is a special alpha. So, okay, so we got this. And okay, the other, you can check in a similar way the other uh, inequality for, the, for one of the increments, okay? You can try to make it just precise. So, uh, let's get back to our original problem. Uh -huh. Let's say application. Right. We have this formula. Mu star, the harmonic measure, mu star, 
Well, the plus is measured on A. A is a single sum. So there is only one. This is a direct mass on its back. So What is the special time when I start in this bar or the in time of B in this, for this problem? You don't need capacity, it's not time. No matter, you, I start here and at every step, so here there are all the arrows in all the directions. Okay. Uh, at every step I can go in any other point. But no matter where, in what point I am, so that's why this problem is so simple, the probability to go in B at the next step will always go to 1 over N. So what's the expected value of the in time of B? Uh, Bn, right? Mm. Every time, every step I have a probability one over n of of hitting B. No matter what happens, at every step one over n. On average, how many how many steps do I need to make and to hit it? Right? I mean, if you I don't know, Make a bet every time you have probability 1 over 100 of winning the bet. Uh, on average, you will need 100 tries to actually win. Well, not the, the step is better. Right? So, here, for this example, there is no need to make all these things, but you can do it as an exercise instead of, I mean, you even use. This is true, it, it's kind of this, if in time is sort of independent on, as a law on what happens in the graph. So, but if you do not use this fact, which trivializes this complete graph, try to use, okay, this formula, this formula is with, for L identical equal to 1, okay, this tells us that the expected value of tau B is just 1 over the capacity of A and B of the sum of the direct P of X, H star of X. So, uh, the complete graph is reversible, the invariant measure is just uh, the uniform measure of 1 over n on every point, so because it's like there's no uh, geometry, right, all the points are the same. So, as an exercise, you can, h star, you can easily calculate, and so the capacity as well, so let's just try to make this uh, computation and get n. A more daring exercise, uh, n, which is, again, not what I want to do, but it's again reversed because it's still reversible. Is you get V permutations on N elements. And then So X and Y are standardizations, okay? It's just a standardization. You get like a 1 over N, 0 if not, and uh, if uh, Y is obtained uh, from a transposition as obtained from sorry from X, so it's not one over N, from X with a transposition. Just two, just two. You know, for instance, I can go to C, B, A, D, but I just click A and C. Okay. So this is also reversible. You can check that uh, P of X equals one over N plus first. Also the same on every point. Of course, there is a, there is a transitivity here. Every point. Well, okay. P of X is one over N factorial invariant. Uh, 
and uh, let's take uh, n uh, even even let's take an even um, and uh, exercise so uh, try to get an estimate for and okay let's take a is just the single time is the best mutation one two two is just the identity up to n to n to up to n and b you remember we were interested of understanding things that kind of go very far away in some sense so we can just put n n minus one up to one okay. uh, so it's a classical problem to to understand how long it takes to on average you go randomly to go like uh, from one point to another point in the segmentation graph. That's like you know you, you have a deck of cards with uh, n cards. Every time you just pick randomly two cards and flip them. Okay. How long it takes to kind of to get from an ordered uh, deck a random one. Okay, that's a bit it's a bit easy. Uh -huh. And also, what I want to do uh, uh, next time is now we will say next next problem is low temperature sound. If you remember, what I told you is that we do these calculations in this uh, simple framework of a finite and a, a finite graph. But all these sort of introducible, you should just put them in a sort of suitable uh, functional analytic framework. They are just true for genetic Markov processes with some kind of good properties. So, uh, if you remember, we were on some, like, uh, our initial motivation was to know how long it would take for our Markov process to visit that, uh, the world space because we wanted to sample some measure okay, on this space for our, in our case our, our graph so uh, what measures are kind of hard to, to sample those were uh, the traps where you stay for a very long time because it will take a very long time to visit the world space space okay? so this means, so what is this little sample start, so, um, sampling we start with our we start with the Markov uh, process on our graph V E and our P of X and Y. But now uh, somebody give us this a potential U from V to R. Uh, maybe U is a bad name because this is called V. Uh, so let me an capital H we didn't use, right? An energy H from V to R. That's the energy of the point B. Okay. And now and the parameter beta, which is positive. And this is so beta is for the inverse temperature. Now we make a new P beta of X and Y in your uh, transition probability, which depends on this parameter beta, which are the old probabilities times E to the beta h of y with minus h of y minus h of x if you have ever seen a bit of like statistical mechanics for instance if kind of if there is no energy or all life is just an end of system like if there is no energy okay you jump like you jumped okay or okay over normalization maybe the problem To jump like what you would jump. But now, if there is some, if you put this in some energy field, it's much more unlikely 
to jump on, on, on the point where, where we see that higher energy. Okay? So just think, for instance, that you were, that you were, uh, we, we had this, uh, this network, and, and there were, you know, like, uh, resistors or whatever, and then uh, we are, our random walk is just the, the, the random walk of a poor electron which lives in, on these quadrupters here, and that's every time he jumps. Okay. First, there is no energy, and uh, he jumps from x to y with some probability that depends on the geometry of this network. From x to y, he will go with probability p of x and y. But if I now add some external potential h of y, Okay. The probability that he will jump to higher energy is lower, and is lower by a factor which is exactly e to the minus b of the energy. So you see, when the energy is high, I really kill a lot of this probability, and when the energy is low. So, and the low temperature limit it means that I want to understand what happens when beta goes to plus infinity, okay. when beta is very, very large. So we have our network, we have our, uh, sorry, Graph, okay. And what I'm thinking is that this energy, so what will be, what, what would the be the point where I'm trapped, where I will stand at very, beta is fixed, but it's very large. We fix the beta which is very large. What are the points where I will get stuck, where I will spend a lot of time? These are the points that are local minima of H. So if H, in, in some point here, so I could go in all these points. But in this point here, H is very small, and is smaller than here and here, than the neighborhood of this point. Of course, uh, it will take me, or say, a long time, to exit from this guy. Okay, because say for instance, let, let's put the for instance you have all the set loop just for simplicity. Uh, what you have here is that P of XX is just the old P of XX, but for any other Y which is a neighbor of X, uh, H of X is a small polar than H of Y, so this guy is strictly positive and I kill the probability of factor to the minus beta. So what we want to discuss is exactly some graph. So I'll, I fix two points, E big bar and Y bar, that are local minima of H. Okay. So for instance, you can think that this one. We will do something a bit less trivial in this next step. And let's say that they can also jump on themselves. Uh, uh, so, let, so H, I'm thinking that H is something like, oh, maybe there is something here. So this is a local minima. This is a, a local minima. So I think that H is something of this form. Right? Small here and small here. When I'm here, I get trapped. When I'm here, I get trapped. But of course, this Markov process was irreducible. With a finite, for each beta, if it was irreducible at time uh, b equals zero, it's always irreducible. I can go at every point. So if I wait long enough, I will keep it pointing x bar. If I wait long enough and start to here at this point, just how long is this quantity with beta? Okay. And uh, okay, all these uh, kind of uh, relatively simple but uh, powerful uh, technology that we discussed uh, will be used then for this problem. So, uh, so just uh, uh, okay. So question. So what are the question? Uh, uh, estimate. Respect the time when we start in the bar of the eaten time of web bar. So 
So it should be clear that this is exponentially long in beta and uh, kind of first order here at least this will depend on the time direction of some exponent c and something which is smaller, right? This was smaller or one is something that equals to zero and speed that was infinity. So can we calculate C explicitly in our original problem of sampling measure? Uh, when beta is large, this means like yes, if you get one C, this means that you have your run your sampling for you know, maybe one minute. If you increase, uh, if you get the wrong C, you are not sure about it. Maybe you have to run it for the time of the universe as long as we take beta not that large, but it's just an exponential into the very very fast. So okay, this will uh, we'll calculate C in the next uh, uh, lecture using exactly uh, this. I'll calculate in this.